In this example, we're using a data set that has data about three species of flea beetle. The three species are Ketocnema consigner, Ketocnema hycotingeri, and Ketocnema heptapotamica. And the data is the width and angle of the Ediagus, which is the male reproductive organ. And what we want to do is to compare our consigner data the mean of the width for our consigner data to another value, perhaps one that was in a published paper, because we want to see if the two populations, if the differences in the two populations is statistically significant. So we've read the data file in, we've used the head command to have a look at the top few rows, and we've used the str command to have a look at the structure of the data frame. So we've 74 observations of three variables. The width and the angle are both numeric, they're both integers. And then the species variable has three values, con, hei, hep, to represent the three different species. One slight issue, if we have a look at the first variable, width, we can see that there's a couple of extra characters at the start there. So we're going to rename that to just say width. So if we use the names command, that gives, us, that gives us a result with three values. We can narrow, narrow that down to just the first value by using this square brackets and then a number for the position. But as well as using that to read the value, we can also use that to write in another value. So for example, if I use this command, where I'm just assigning the value width into that first position, we can see that the first variable name has changed now to say just width. Now we're interested in just the consigner data, but the data frame has data for all three species. So we need some way of just extracting it. We could modify the original CSV file in another program and then re-import it to R. But this square bracket notation also lets us extract parts of a data frame. And the way that it works is it wants it in this format here. So because a data frame is two dimensional, it wants two numbers. Something to indicate which rows we'd like and something to indicate which columns we'd like. So for example, if I want the first 15 rows, I can do just one colon 15. And if I leave the section for columns blank, it will give me all three columns. If I'd like just a particular column, I can put the name of the column in quotes. If I want more than one column, then I can do that as well, but slightly differently because after the comma, it's expecting a single value. So the way that I get around that is I use the C com command, the combine command. So this will give me the two columns that I'm after. How do I select the rows just for the consigner data? I could look through the data set and make a note of which row numbers they correspond to, but that's quite long-winded. I can use this square bracket notation to make it give me just the rows that I'm after. First of all, I want all columns, so I'll leave that section blank. And then, in this section where it's expecting rows, rather than put row numbers in, I can put in a condition. So I can say, within this data set flea beetle and the column species, only show me those rows where it has the value CON within that particular column. Note there, there's a, a double um, equal sign to make it do an equivalence. And there's the data that I'm after. The only other thing I need to do is to write that into a new variable. 
So now I've separated out my consigner data, I can start to have a look at it. I can start to do my exploratory data analysis because the test that I will need to do on it will depend on, for example, whether it's parametric or non-parametric. So the first thing I'll do is to have a look at a histogram. So it's not quite symmetrical. We have our peak here. Look a bit more data down to the, the left hand side, so possibly a little bit of negative skew. It's not hugely different from what we would expect to see for normally distributed data. So let's try a box plot. Again, not quite symmetrical. There's more down the bottom section here than there is at the top. But it doesn't look too far from what we, we would expect to see. We'll do a QQ norm to plot the quartiles. So that just gives us the dots there. And then we'll fit a line to it, a QQ line and see how well they match up. So there's two data points away from the line there, but apart from that, it's it's quite a good match. And if we did a Shapiro-Wilkes test, that would be one more line of evidence that supports the idea that this is normally distributed data. And because of what we're measuring here, we're measuring the width of a, a body part, there's no real reason to suggest that it wouldn't be normally distributed. So just before we start testing the data, here we I've used this uh, notation object dollar sign and then the, the column name. Now I could have used attach fb.con and then just type the column name in. That would work. Slight problem is that if I also did say fb.hei and read in the, the HEI data and the same for HEP, I would have three data frames, three, three objects, three variables, that each had a width, an angle, and a species column in. And then it would be start to become more difficult to work with. So rather than use attach and risk possible confusion, we can use this notation where we have the object name or variable name, dollar sign, and then the, the column name itself because that's unambiguous it's always going to be unique so we have uh, fb.con data the width and we want to compare that to a known mean so we have a sample compared to a mean we're comparing means it's going to be a t-test and because we only have one sample it's going to be a one sample t-test So the mean of our data, just have a quick look, is 146. Now the mean that we're going to compare it to is only 142.23 something. So th there's not a huge difference there, it's a little bit under 3%. The question is, is it statistically significant? So we'll do a t-test. using our sample and comparing it to a known mean of 142.2386 run the t-test p-value 0.004 so the null hypothesis would be that there's no significant difference our significance level is 0.05 our p-value is 0 0.004. So the rule is, if it's greater than, accept the null hypothesis. If it's less than, reject. So our p-value is less than the critical value. So we reject the null hypothesis and say that there is a significant difference between the two populations. 